half in the bag. I'd buy that for a dollar. This is my life. It's my dream. Perfect strangers. I should have finished high school. I should have, I should have finished it. I, I, well, oh, Jay? Oh, Mike. What are you doing? Uh, I was just rummaging. Oh. I got evicted from my apartment. Me too. And then I lost all the money I made working for Mr. Plinkett at the Indian Casino. Me too. So then I started turning tricks in the alley. I, 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 I didn't do that. Hey, listen, I know what we should do. Let's go back to the VCR repair shop. It's been a year since we've been there. Maybe some new work has come in. That's a great idea. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, hey, look. It's that new Marvel comic book superhero movie, The Avengers. Oh, yeah. I hear that movie's two and a half hours of things happening. Oh, wow, yeah, we should check it out. Oh, but both of us are broke. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. There's an alleyway right there. You know what to do, Trick Turner. Get to work. Step right up, folks. Get your cock sucked. Get your cock sucked here, folks. 50 cents. I mean, $10. $10. Step right up, folks, and get your cock sucked. Hmm. Oh, wow. That was a big theater. Yeah. I would have expected a larger turnout for opening weekend of the Avengers. Yeah. Well, where should we sit? Uh, I don't know. Right here? Sure. Mm -hmm. Works for me. Oh, it started. Oh, good. Just in time. Yeah. Mm. Oh, this is the 1998 Avengers with Uma Thurman, Ray Fiennes, and Shaquille O'Neal. Don't you mean Sean Connery? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I always get them confused. Yeah, it's understandable. They're both black. Yeah, you know, this isn't a big deal. I actually have a torrent of the new Avengers on my iPhone. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Let's just watch that. Yeah. Is that Sam Jackson? No, that's uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh. You're here with the mission, sir? Trying to get me back in the world? I'm trying to save it. Doctor, we need you to come in. What if I say no? I'll persuade you. What are you asking me to do? It's called the Avengers Initiative. So we just saw the Avengers, and I don't think it really needs much of an introduction. Uh, no. I think you all pretty much know the Avengers at this point. Yes, uh, unless you've been living under a rock. Yes, yes, which I have been. Oh. That's not very comfortable. I've tried it before. But yeah, The Avengers is uh, the new Marvel action adventure superhero movie, and it's uh, written and directed by Joss Whedon. Yes. Of the Buffy the Vampire fame, Firefly, uh, Dollhouse, etc. Most recently, writing Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. It's yeah. been a Joss Whedon kind of summer already. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the first big summer blockbuster action movie of the uh, 2012 summer season. And we just saw it on Jay's iPhone. So Jay, what did you think of the Avengers? Uh, I thought it was great. I had a really great time, a lot of fun, good characters, uh, action that was well executed. You could tell what was happening. Uh, this is a movie that had extreme potential to just be a complete disaster. Yeah. It's kind of a miracle that it works at all. Uh, everything was working against it, I think, as far as all these different characters. Because that was my first thought was like, okay, these characters kind of work in their own individual movies, but when you put them all standing next to each other, it's going to look horribly silly and stupid. And it doesn't. It, it actually kind of works. Yeah, you had you had 
reservations or fears before. You're like, it's going to be a clusterfuck. I was really worried that it was just, yeah, too many characters, yeah. too much to keep track of, too many uh, pre-existing, you know, mythologies with all these different series of movies. Yeah. Well, I think the, the precursor for that or the, the big warning was the X-Men movies, the second and third. Well, the second one was great, but the third one in particular, yeah. where it was like, uh, it was like character overload and not enough time to focus on one individual thing. Yeah. So I think the um, having those those films ahead of them, the Thor movie, the Captain America movie, it's like, that was really good planning. Yeah. Um, instead of just jumping into an Avengers movie, having those uh, original origin films yeah. to kind of set the stage for everybody, except for the minor characters, of course, like uh, Black Widow and uh, Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah. Who were probably the two least developed in the movie. Whereas, yeah. like, what are they doing? What's their thing? Yeah, but they developed enough because uh, Black Widow was in the Iron Man movies. And, um, and of course, we had two uh, Hulk movies. Yeah, although I don't think the, the, the first one, the Ang Lee one, is not canon with this series of movies. Yeah. They had to reboot that immediately. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's canon or what isn't at this point. It, it's in the same with the comic books. It's like all this shit everywhere. It doesn't matter. No, not really. You know, as long as it's an entertaining movie. Yeah. Well, that's that's what's amazing is how everyone is given the appropriate amount of screen time. Yeah. Where it's like, if you're uh, a huge comic book fan and you really love Captain America, this works as a really good Captain America movie. Mm -hmm. If you really like the Hulk, it works as a good Hulk movie. Yeah. Everybody is sort of given enough time to shine. And then the best stuff in the movie for me is, uh, the action scenes are well done, but the best stuff is just the, the scenes where the movie sort of relaxes and just lets these characters yeah. interact yeah. Um, with all these different types of personalities right. and seeing you know, who gets along with who, who argues with who, uh, which is great that there was a lot of bickering in this. They're just constantly arguing with each other, which I enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, what, one thing that I enjoyed the most in the movie was, and I think a lot of comic book fans will enjoy, is when they fought each other. capacity. How about that? Yeah, I was thinking about that. It's like uh, bringing out the, the inner child in you where you're like, I wonder what would happen if Thor fought Iron Man, you know? And then there's no, they're both the heroes. They shouldn't be fighting yeah. each other, but you want to see them yeah. fight each other. Just to see who would win. And they, <laughs> yeah. and they, they work in scenes like that mm -hmm. where it's not just them. You know, they, they have their conflicts and there's logical reasons why they end up fighting with each other. Yeah. And it's and that, those are the neater, neater parts of the movie for me. Not, not so much the end battle, but no. when Thor fought the Hulk and uh, when Thor fought Iron Man, yeah. um, those are great parts. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then Captain America shows up yeah. to step in the middle of it because he's Captain America mm -hmm. and that's what he does. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> This comes off as something like where you have to be a real super nitpicking nerd not to enjoy the movie, not to go, okay, well, they, they took some artistic liberty here and there. Like people that complain about the Lord of the Rings movies, like they didn't include this particular detail. Right. It. It's like the fucking movies are two and a half hours long <laughs> each and, and how the hell can you make that? Yeah. Like, you have to have that logical part of your brain. And when you're making a, a, an Avengers movie where you have like six or seven team members on this, yeah. and there are all these crazy characters and you're trying to make one movie about this team, it's like they did it as best as you could. Yeah. In my opinion, <laughs> I am, I am O H in in my honest opinion, yeah. humble. I am H O. There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people. So when we needed them, they could fight the battles that we never could. Let me ask you this, Jay, what makes it enjoyable? What made it enjoyable for you? Uh, the characters and the performances and the way everybody played off each other. Okay. Uh, there's good action, and the, that's the thing is the action is that it's executed in a way where you can tell what's happening. It's done yes. very, it's, it's classy, it's classy action. Well, that's the thing is the ending reminded me a lot of Transformers 3. 
didn't they have a big Transformers thing flying around Chicago, like smashing through buildings? Well, and all, all I know stuff? about the ending is from the trailer since I didn't see the second half. But... Oh, that's right. Yeah. But that's the thing, is that there's a difference between that and this, is that you feel more connected to this. Yeah. Um, you feel like, I understand visually what's happening. It's yeah. not just a clusterfuck where you, you don't know what's going on. That was a, a, a minor complaint of mine, was that there was too much action. Too much action? Yeah. Really? I started to get like, okay. There, you know, see, it was there were, great. But... Yeah, there were portions for me where I was like, okay, this could use a little more action, mainly in the middle chunk of the movie. Which is probably my biggest complaint of the movie is that the middle chunk, the middle, the, the entire second act takes place on that ship, that floating ship. Yeah. And it got to a point, because it's a long movie, and it got to a point where I was like, all right, get off the ship, get off the ship. No. Like, we need a new location. I disagree. That, I mean, that's where they, they had all the character stuff, and that's where the, a lot of the plot stuff was from. And I felt sorry for, like, the regular movie-going audience during that <laughs> one scene where... They're all yelling at each other. Oh, that was and you a great this, scene. Like, fast paced, like Joss Whedon dialogue, and it's like, boo, 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 boo. just everybody arguing with like, each other. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> and trying to keep up with it. Yeah. And, um... How desperate are you? And you call on such lost creatures to defend you. You have made me very desperate. We're not a team. We're a time bomb. Well, Jay, let's start back at the beginning. What did you think about the first 20 minutes or so? I was worried about the movie when it first started. That opening scene, that sort of heist with the, the Loki character stealing the the, the MacGuffin cube and then Stellan Skarsgård being brainwashed and all that stuff. It felt like, like a like a opening scene of a TV show. Something about it felt really like small and cheap. And I was a little worried. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Especially since Joss Whedon has never done anything on this scale. Like oh. this is a big movie. He's yeah. done smaller things. So it's like, uh oh, is he out of his out of his league here? But it, it quickly writes itself after that scene. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought the um the plot was serviceable. I mean you can't get too well, plotty with a movie like yeah, this. Yeah, this is a movie that really isn't about the plot. It's and every time there was stretches of exposition or science jargon, my eyes just sort of glazed over. Yeah. As like, when is when is Scarlett Johansson going to kick somebody? When so, are we but, going to see her hind quarters? There, there are a number of shots like that in the movie. Yeah, we yeah. should point out that this is a movie that has a little something for everybody. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get you got uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson in tight black leather but you also get Mark Ruffalo nude with Harry Dean Stanton. Right. So they had a checklist. They're like, which dude should take all their clothes off? Chris Evans, no. Chris Hemsworth, no. Mark Ruffalo, yeah. Oh yeah. And you know what'll make the scene even, even hotter? Harry Dean Stanton. Harry Dean Stanton. He's 90 years old and he can barely walk. That's Mark, hot. put on these dirty clothes. Yeah. Number one thing was there was no tacked on horrible love story. Yes, yeah. Where it's like, we don't have time for this. You know, the, the old case of the not gays, yeah. where they didn't have to squeeze all that in, like, oh, Captain America has yeah. a lady friend. It, it, it seems like something where the studio would be like, Captain America needs to meet a new lady, or, right. or one of, yeah. I guess it would mainly be Captain the, America. There's He's... too many dudes on this team of superheroes. All of them have to hit on Scarlett Johansson at one yeah, point, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. None of that, it's just like, focused on the comic book story. Like, right. And it, it didn't bring in that crap. The, there was lots of humor present, but it was witty humor. Yeah. It was uh, Joss Whedon's witty humor, and it wasn't dumb humor. Name's Willie. Yeah. Hi. Say my name. Say my name. And, and it wasn't every character constantly spouting wisecracks. It was a lot of uh, uh, Tony Stark doing it, which is appropriate for him. Right. Because he's a smart ass. Mm -hmm. uh, Captain America isn't isn't cracking stupid jokes during the end action scene at all. Yes, yes. Because he's more, you know, down to business. The characters remain consistent. The only thing that annoyed me in the movie, um, well, one, I thought there was too much action, which is weird. <laughs> um, 
I know, it's weird, but. I thought there was the, I was the like, appropriate uh, amount. I, I was like, who's gonna clean all this up? <laughs> it's like Avengers, uh, you know, property damage. The movie, like. What like, if they have to ah! do it themselves? It cuts to them the next day and they're just like Sweeping. pushing a broom down the street. The one sequence that bugged me was uh, that I thought, you know, dipped into the Michael Bay kind of stupid territory was when um, Black Widow was thrown into the air and jumped on one of those things. Yeah, I, yeah. I would have preferred a scene where she like scaled the building like realistically yeah. very, over a course of a couple different edits where keep cutting back to her and like things are falling on her. Cause she's not a superhero, she's just a regular human. Right. And I thought that was a little ridiculous, her flying around on that thing and jumping. Yeah, and it, it, yeah, that does stand out, especially because everybody else is used so appropriately as far as like, okay, yeah. Captain America, he needs to be on the ground, you yeah. know, and, and Iron Man can fly around and Hulk is gonna jump and smash yeah. into buildings. Like everybody kind of has their place and mm -hmm. they all play off each other really well. So yeah, her just jumping on that thing was a little, it, it reminded me of the Dungeons and Dragons movie when, uh, Thor Birch was riding the dragon at the end. Oh, <laughs> how can I forget the Dungeons and Dragons movie? By the way, if you haven't seen the Dungeons and Dragons movie, you should watch it. It's amazing. It's it's better than the Avengers, I would say. <sighs> yeah. And that's high praise. Yeah. In terms of scope and uh, visual effects and, uh, you know, sheer budget and... Dialogue, dialogue. performances. Yeah, everything. Everything. Yeah, it's, everything. It's amazing. One minor issue I... I thought about was that the main villain, Loki, is sort of absent for the entire end battle. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's all these these flying dragon robot alien yeah, things, yeah. whatever they are, and they're just cannon fodder, you know. Mm -hmm. There's no sort of personality to them, and it almost me needs like, you know, like if Loki is the Emperor, it needed a Darth Vader. Yeah. It needed someone that's that same species as them, but more of a higher up than mm -hmm. either Captain America and Captain America could fight or Iron Man or something a, like that. A minor boss. A minor boss, yeah. It didn't really have that. It just had lots of uh, disposable yeah. little alien guys. Well, I mean, number one with the movie, great, great cast, great characters, great dialogue. Yeah. Um, all built around the framework of uh, glowing MacGuffin and a pseudo revenge, I want to take over the world plot. Yeah. And 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 if I were to just say a minor thing, and and it's almost like a given. It's like, okay, you're making an Avengers movie. What's the plot? Who cares? <laughs> the plot is <laughs> whatever the, gets them together and and yeah. working with each other. And you have yeah. to kind of turn your brain into that mindset. It's like yeah. the plot is the guy wants to take over the world, and they have to stop him, and they have to formulate a, a team, and. Um, and if I were to just look at it as a movie, I would say that the only thing is just some sort of real good motivation from Loki. I mean, it was set up in the Thor movie. Yeah. Um, but, eh, you know, it was there. It wasn't super strong. Right. Um, good enough for this and uh, acceptable. But the, the lack of... Um, the lack of the dumb love story, the lack of the heavy-handed, we have to work as a team yeah. kind of crap. It was in there, but it was like sprinkling it in yeah. mildly. Well, and it worked, it was very natural as far as them discovering it in yeah. a way that made sense, where it mm -hmm. wasn't, there wasn't a big speech about how they have to work together. Yeah. It's like, oh, you can do this and I can do this. Yeah. How almost, do we make those two work together, you know? They almost discover it naturally. Yeah, and I liked that, yeah. I appreciated that. This sets the bar pretty high for the rest of the summer. It does. Yeah. So how, how do you think this movie will compare to Battleship? I think Battleship will sink. At, At the, the box, box office! Oh, it's a good thing you added that last part because I didn't get it. No offense, but I don't play well with others. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that away, what are you? Uh, genius. Billionaire playboy philanthropist. <laughs> That's another thing that was great in this movie was the details. Oh, Lots sure. of little fun details. My favorite was when Thor was fighting the Hulk and he goes like this to get his hammer and he's waiting because oh, yeah, it's yeah. somewhere on the ship is the <laughs> hammer and he's just standing there and it's like, yeah. And then finally it starts coming through the walls and it just comes to him. It's like, it must have been like, 
you know, halfway across the ship and it's just busting through everything to get to him. Yeah, yeah. Um, where, where realistic logic yeah. works in the sake of this fantastical story where right. it's like, he can grab his hammer, but it still has to get it, there. It's things somewhere like that. Yeah. on the ship and he doesn't know where, but he's going to make it come to him. Yeah. And, and that, There's some good stuff with the Hulk, too, like yeah. the unwieldiness of his powers yeah. uh, that we won't wanna, don't want to spoil, but yeah. yeah, lots of good stuff with the Hulk. I think that was my favorite... Uh, uh, aspect of the movie was the Hulk. And right. I, I like the way he was handled. Yeah. And I like Mark Ruffalo in the role. Yeah. Um, a lot more than what was uh, Eric Bana. Eric Bana and uh, I didn't see the Edward Norton one, Edward so I, I can't say. But it's it's not a good movie superhero type movie. Because no, Hulk he, isn't a superhero. He he, I mean, he works he is, in this but, where he's a part of a larger thing. Yeah. Yes. He he works in this context in very limited capacity. Hulk can't carry a feature film. No, no. Despite being so strong, the irony <laughs> is that Hulk cannot carry a feature yeah. film. Yeah, well, and he comes across as sort of a breath of fresh air in this movie where everybody's sort of clever and uh, yeah. creative about their powers, and then the Hulk just runs around and breaks things. There's like a blunt simplicity to him that's interesting. Yeah. So, Mike, would you recommend The Avengers? No. Would you recommend The Avengers? No. Fuck that movie. <laughs> cheap special effects. Fucking cheap ass. So that was the Avengers. I wonder what Marvel's gonna do now that they've completely blown their wad. Yeah, blow their wad multiple times over and over again until that wad ceases to produce money. Hmm. Ah, shit. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Time to play some Tetris. Okay, I'm back. Where'd you go? Denmark. Wait, what? I went to Denmark. Denmark? Just now? Yeah. What's, what's the fuck? What's the problem? So what were you doing in Denmark? Well, Jay, uh, I went to Copenhagen, Denmark, to the CPH PIX Film Festival. Okay. Which is the Copenhagen Film Festival, and... Um, and they screened the Cop Dog review and the 70 Minute Phantom Menace review. Now, was this something like, did they contact you and say, we want you to come to our festival or? Yes, they, they emailed me and invited me along. Hmm. And at first I said, uh, <laughs> I ignored the email at first. And then they emailed back and said, we can pay for your trip and your hotel and everything. And I said, okay. <laughs> You'll go anywhere for a free trip. Now I'll go and, um, <laughs> But I have never been to Europe, and so it was my first trip overseas to Europe, and it was exciting. Uh, everything was weird there. Um, I met a lot of nice people and uh, went out and drank some Danish beers. This all happened just now. That's amazing. Yeah. but um, I didn't realize I was sitting here for so long. But Yeah, you were. Well, I was playing Tetris, and Perhaps you know, time you, flies you, by. But uh, yeah, it was a, a really fun time. Um, a lot of people showed up to the screening. In fact, it was sold out. The screening of the Phantom Menace review yeah. sold out? Mm -hmm. That's impressive. It was uh, like 180 people oh, or something, so. Wow. Um, how many of those people would you say were aware of the review beforehand, or how many just went because they were going to a film festival? Or? Most of them had seen it before. I asked, wow. okay. I said, who, who has seen this before? I was kind of worried at first because I didn't, I was expecting like, you know, 10 or so people to show up that had seen the reviews and the most most of the audience to be like just random film festival people yeah. who are just like, mm. Well, it's been proven in the past that public screenings of, of our stuff doesn't have much of a turnout. Right. So what you're saying is given the history of three to three and a half people showing up, um, I, I was expecting the worst. Yeah. And um, I was shocked at the number of people that came. And it was great. Uh, they were very excitable and excited. 
and we played the cop dog review and it went over very well. Well, that's it was, great. It was a fun time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was given some gifts, some Danish beer, uh, a Lego set. Someone gave me a pie. Someone gave you a pie? And a sticker, a sticker too. The yeah. same person that gave you the pie gave you the sticker? No, a different person that gave me the pie gave me the sticker. Okay, I'm very curious about the pie. The Danish love their bicycles. Okay. Like more people ride bikes than cars there. Hmm. And occasionally they drive them around drunk. It's a very weird country. <laughs> but yeah, after the screening, the next night was the closing events of the film festival. And um, there was a nice dinner for all the filmmakers that came. And then after that, there was, uh, you know, the awards presentation. Uh, there was uh, lots of drinking, of course, and uh, there uh, a band played. I, I don't know. I think it was a Danish band. <laughs> I didn't know who they were. I watched a little bit of it. Did you get the opportunity to talk to any other filmmakers that were at the event or I, see any other films? I did not see any other films. Wow. I saw Iron Sky while I was there. Which was not in the festival? Or? Which was not in the festival, okay. no. Um, but I, I talked to a couple other filmmakers, but I didn't get a chance to see any other films. I did see a talk by um, Nicholas Winding Refn. The director of Drive. Yeah. Yes, yes. He, apparently he, not apparently, but he lives in Copenhagen. Uh, he's Danish, you know, and he lives very close to the festival. So he came and did an hour long talk and uh, basically told everyone that Hollywood is a soulless, horrible machine that will chew you up and spit you out. <laughs> and, and, you know, he, he, he conveyed this information within an hour very concisely. All right. It was, it was beautiful. <laughs> it was a beautiful event. I really enjoyed that. Um, and uh, I walked around the city, took a lot of pictures. Uh, there are lots of buildings. That was the weird thing, is that when they first contacted me, I looked at the festival website, and I looked at all the films, and I was like, are you sure? <laughs> this looks like a kind of a highbrow, you know, foreign film festival. Are you sure you want, like, horrible schlock? Okay, turn off. <laughs> playing at your film festival, and they was like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's comedy, it's a new form of comedy, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and when I was there, I met some of the other filmmakers, and a lot of them were from, uh, all of them were from Europe, okay. France, Germany, and they all have highbrow intellectual artistic films. And what, what is your film? <laughs> uh, what, what is your, well, you see, I'm from Is that Wisconsin. your impression of yourself? Yeah, I'm from Wisconsin. <laughs> That's how they hear me. Okay. I'm from right. Wisconsin. I made a 70 minute long video. I talk about how Star Wars is stupid. And the, oh, yes, what, what? And I say, well, what's your film? It's called Giovanna. Ejo. What's Giovanna? And you're like, what? <laughs> it's called Giovanna. Giovanna. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so yeah, and you're like, uh, I, I, it takes like six minutes to describe what the the review is, the yeah. Phantom Menace review. You're like, well, it's a thing, and it's a thing, and then it did this, and then it was this, and then blah, 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 blah. And then they go. And then their eyes glaze over. Their eyes glaze over. Or they, or they do the, this is when a foreign person has no fucking clue what you're saying, they go. <laughs> Well, I guess we should get out of here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting kind of creepy. Why do you say that? Because your hand is on my leg. Oh, I, I thought that was the seat rest, yeah. I swear. I'm sure you did. Yeah. Well, back to the VCR repair shop. I wonder if it's still in business. I wonder what happened to Mr. Plinkett. Huh, I guess we'll have to wait and see.